In this video, I'll be assembling the Global Power SR1 do-it-yourself battery. Why am I doing this? In Belgium, we are not getting money from feeding energy from the solar panels back into the grid. In other words, the energy meter doesn't turn backwards anymore. So it's better to store it for later use. Let me show you the situation we have. We start off with a Sunny Tri-Power from SMA. It's a three-phase string inverter. Then it goes into a breaker box with an energy meter. And from there, it goes to the AC distribution box with a Victron energy meter. That's three-phase as well. Then I have added a Multiplus 5000 VA. This also has a 5 kilowatt hour battery, but the 5 kilowatt hour battery isn't enough. I have programmed the Victron Multiplus in a way to keep the energy meter at zero. I've done this by using a Raspberry Pi, which is running Victron software. I was researching 15 kilowatt hour do-it-yourself batteries because they are very cost effective. I saw a review from Andy at the off-grid garage and it looked like a great battery. So I put it on the list. At the same time, Global Power reached out to me and asked if I want to assemble their battery on video. So let me show you how I assemble it and connect it to the system. Global Power has warehouses in the US and EU. However, the one I wanted wasn't in stock anymore. So I had it shipped from China. It took two and a half months to arrive and I didn't have to pay any tax. I will see if it survived the journey. But so far, all the boxes look in good condition. I also scanned the QR code of the cells and they are from Cornex and they're produced exactly one year ago. The capacity is 314 amp hours. Let me now open up the box and see what's inside. There are a couple of issues here. I asked them to send the version with a big breaker. Why? This breaker is able to break a short circuit current of 15 kilo amps or 15,000 amps. A lithium battery can deliver a current 10 times its capacity during a short. So that would be 3,150 amps. Technically, that's okay, but I'd rather have a bigger one. So if you decide to buy one of these DIY boxes, I recommend getting the big breaker version. The second issue is that there was no manual included in the box. I looked everywhere, even on the sales page, they had the wrong manual. So I found a video online that's showing how to install the battery. I have just mounted the wheels on the box. The wheels look great, they are rubberized and they all have a brake. So that's good to keep it stationary. I've used B6 screws as they said in the video and I have two left. So let's hope this is good. Now I put the battery upright, I added the epoxy sheets and I will start building up the battery like this. If I put it on the floor, assemble the battery and try to lift it, I might not be able to. So that's why I'm building it this way. I just finished putting all the battery cells in the box with all the epoxy sheets. One, two, three, and all epoxy sheets between the cells. Make sure 
when you start your first cell, you have the negative on the left. So you'll end up with the negative and the positive right here. Now I'll finish up adding these sheets on top and then I will add the compression plate. Make sure the holes of the compression plate are facing forwards. There is a nice slot where you can fit it in. I just finished adding the compression plate. But before I will tighten the B13 screws, I'll push all the cells backwards, making sure they're flush, so the bus bar will fit properly. I will tighten them in a diagonal way. I'll first start here, then this one, then the one in the back, and then this one in the front. And I will keep doing it until the pressure plate rests on this. I have now added the balancing channels. You have to make sure that the pressure plate is all the way down, otherwise you cannot fit the B4 screws. And it's a bit fiddly here at the bottom. It's quite confusing which is cell number 1 and cell number 16, because these channels are named A and B. So if you look at it from the front, the left is A, and this is B. So we start with cell 0 and we end with cell 16 or cell 1 and cell 16. The next step is adding the bus bars to connect the cells. The cells came with these flexible bus bars. In my opinion that's great. But the battery box came with these solid bus bars. But I still prefer these so I'll be using the flexible bus bars. I have finished wiring the small leads for the BMS. We start off from A1 to the first cell negative. This was quite a tight squeeze, but it still worked. I have used B1 screws for these connections. And it's best to have them like this, because if they're flipped, the lead is too short. So the balancing connections are always upright. I have not included the link yet here. That's this connection. Because if I do, then these connection points will be over 50 volts. And that wouldn't be safe to touch. So now let's install the BMS first. And then make that link at the bottom. I just mount the BMS on the BMS plate. You have to connect them with these little screws I found scattered in this box. I just finished mounting the BMS. So A is going to the right and B is going to the left. I have then added the negative bus bar cable to the BMS. You have to change the BMS screws to the ones that comes in the kit. They're a little bit longer. Then I press the button and the BMS is on. If we open the JK BMS, we can see the cell voltages. Let's now mount the front plate to the battery box. We have the positive, the negative, the breaker, the BMS interface and the screen. Now I'll have to figure out how to connect these to the BMS. I now finished wiring up the box. However, when I close the lid, there is quite some tension on it. So I don't know if I wired it correctly, which is impossible without a manual. I had some trouble with lighting up the display as well, but I removed the on and off switch and I replace it with the display. So I removed this button and put it on display instead. So now I will close up the battery with the epoxy sheet and the front cover. I do have voltage on the battery terminals so that's good, but the battery is still in alarm. And I don't know why. 
So would I recommend this battery? No, not yet. They have two manuals on their website. One for the base BMS and one for the JK BMS. But the version is different with these flexible bus bars. I do not know which screws and bolts to use anywhere. The manual doesn't tell me. Global Power needs to take somebody from the outside of the company and tell them to assemble it and answer all their questions in a decent step-by-step -step manual. There should always be a complete manual in the box. Overall, this is a good battery, but I don't recommend it for now. They need to sort out their documentation. I have to end the video here. I'm going to China in two days to visit factories and an expo about solar power. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.